Hey everyone, welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we talk about movies on this show. And this episode is the winner of the previous month's Patreon vote. Because uh, every month, of course, we put four movies into a vote for our $5 patrons to to pick, pick a, an option. And all four movies this month, uh, or the last month's vote for this month, were video game adaptations. So either way, we weren't going to get anything too special. Yeah, yeah, we we were discussing this. There's, there's not really a high bar for video game movies. There's not. Obviously, the reason why we picked video game movies for the vote is because the new Tomb Raider's coming out soon. Uh, you can expect a review of that, of course, on the on the channel. But uh, the winner, as you can see in the title, was Super Mario Brothers from 1993. So that is what we're going to talk about. I'm just going to give a spoiler warning right now. I don't think anyone cares about get finding out no, what it's no. like. No, no, no one gives a shit. It's, 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 it's this. So, full spoilers for Super Mario Bros. 1993, uh, starring Bob Hoskins, of course, uh, and John Leguizamo. Leguizamo? Leguizamo? I'm, I'll leave it. Yeah, yeah. I'll just let you attempt that. I mean, it, it, uh, it wouldn't be an episode without you butchering a name. Because, of course, when you, you, you try to cast the two iconic Italian brothers, you cast an Englishman... And a Latino. I don't see the problem with that. That's the first thing. That's just the first point I want to make is that was a choice that was made. Um, uh, so that's the thing. Uh, but so 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 we have they have that. Dennis Hopper, of course, is the villain. And funnily enough, the last time we had a Patreon vote winner, which was a terrible movie, it was Waterworld, which also starred Dennis Hopper as the villain. So it's a bit of a trend here. There uh, is, isn't there? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this trend. Bit of a trend where. We seem to be on this Dennis Hopper, uh, uh, you know, back when he was paying a lot of alimony in the mid nineties, he needed a lot of extra movies to uh, afford everything, and this is the crap that he was doing to do that. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, where to begin with uh, Super Mario Brothers? It obviously it's one of the first big notable video game adaptations, and obviously it's the first, but it's definitely the first big, you know, public eye consciousness one, and uh, an adaptation so bad that I believe Nintendo of. Like they were so ashamed by the reputation that they went into lockdown and have not let any adaptations of anything between this and I think like one or two of the cartoons around the time that they also weren't happy yeah, with. Yeah, well, we had a Mario cartoon around this. It was slightly. And, and of course, around this time, you had the the uh, it was the CDI and then the cartoon, the Zelda cartoon that was connected to it with the yeah. Excuse me, princess, that, that one. Yeah. They basically. They, they started holding everything tight in the vault and said, "No, stop ruining our properties." And they've been kinda... and it's only it's only just come to an end because we're getting yeah. another Mario movie, right? Yeah, animated, of course, which is probably the smarter thing to do. <laughs> I, I agree, but I mean, the fact that another one is coming is you know it's shocking given but that it took a long time. Yeah, that, that's the reputation that this movie D- deservedly so, to be honest. D- d- to a point, I, here's the thing, right? This is a bad movie. There's no question of that. It's a it's a really really bad movie, but it ain't the worst thing ever. Well, no. It just it ain't. It's it's it's. I mean, as an adaptation of Super Mario Brothers, it is a, is awful. As a movie, it's just kind of a mediocre nineties weird science fiction dystopian movie. I think it's a bit worse than 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 you're giving it credit for there. I don't know. It's just not the worst thing ever. Like, honestly, as a bad movie, I find it a very watchable bad movie. I've seen it quite a few times though at this point. Maybe, maybe nostalgia of seeing it as a kid helps. I, I think that I, don't know. I think that has a fact because beyond the opening section, this was my first proper watch, mm-hmm. and and I think it is a bad movie. No, it is a. I'm not saying it's not a bad movie. I'm just saying it's not the worst thing ever, right? Oh, no, it's not a, oh, okay, this is universally regarded as, like, the worst movies ever, sure. but No, but it is. That's, the, that's, the, that's what I'm saying, though. It's it, slightly above that. It's still not, it's not, it's, you, you said mediocre. I think mediocre is being generous. It, it's very misguided. It's, it's got a lot of really weird elements. But honestly, as, as a movie, like, as a bad movie to watch to kind of, like, see how weird it is, this has got a lot of weird things on offer. It's constantly throwing things at you that are making you go, hey, why the hell did they do that? Like, you're saying that a lot, and it's enough that, as a bad movie, this is perfect for a bad movie night. This, oh, is, sure. this is not a... I mean, it's not quite up to the room standards or anything like that, but it is, 
it's it's kind of in that caliber. You could put it on in a bad movie night, and it would fit, and it wouldn't be boring to watch as a bad movie. I don't think. No, no, it's not boring in that sense. Definitely not. So yeah, I mean that's that's the extent of my defense. I'm not going to say anything else positive about it. <laughs> what would you want from me? Uh, the, the the only other genuine positive, I'd say, is some of the practical effects held up all right. Oh, that's it. A good chunk of them did. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean there were there were a few that weren't great, but. Yeah, that, Yoshi, that... Yoshi looks pretty good. I mean, doesn't look like Yoshi, but... Oh, yeah, it looks like an actual just little dinosaur. Yeah, which... I mean, yeah, the practical effects hold up for the most part, and I think that's because it just came at a time before everything switched to CG. In fact, this came out the same summer as Jurassic Park, so the fact that there's any CGI is actually kind of surprising, because I feel like a lot of Hollywood didn't start doing that until after Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park, yeah. It led the way, didn't it? But there was a couple of really goofy CGI moments. Uh, but for the most part, it's practical effects. Uh, the plot of the Mario Brothers movie, if you can believe it, uh, is... So it's set in Brooklyn, and when the asteroid came that killed all the dinosaurs, it didn't actually just kill all the dinosaurs. It split reality into two. Into two dimensions. And... There's our dimension, which is the normal one, uh, and then there's the other dimension where everyone evolved from dinosaurs in some way. They're all humanoid, but they actually evolved from dinosaurs. And most of the world's a wasteland, but you've got your one city, your Koopa City, where everyone's, you know, there, right? And it's kind of like a weird, kind of fetish-based, like, cyberpunk world. Yeah, it really feels like some of the creatives wanted to really push this and then someone from nintendo stepped in and went hey this is for kids remember did, did they step in and say that i don't know if they did <laughs> oh i i think i think there is restraint has been shown okay is, 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 all right that, that's no that's the thing I, I i can see all these elements but they're always slightly off camera they're never dead center they're, they're never right, okay. they're never the focus they're just kind of around you remember the scene where they go dancing, right? And the camera keeps lingering on the fact that the, the necklace they're trying to get back is between, you know, in the cleavage of the big woman, who's oh, yeah, wearing yeah. a spiky red leather jacket. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, the, there's these elements. I, I, I'm thinking things like the foot on the shoulder. Oh, yes, that scene where they get... Uh, like, like, it's never addressed. It's just kind of in the corner of your eye. You get to the police station and the desk sergeant, there's like a woman's foot just on his on his shoulder, randomly. And then when it comes to the, the shot from behind, you can kind of see her sitting up on the desk and she's got her just her foot resting on his shoulder. But it's just kind of there. It's, it's one of those bizarre things I don't think I noticed when I was a kid, but when I got older, I'm like, wait, why is there a foot on his shoulder? Right, that's what I mean. I think that's where they stepped in and went, okay, no further than that. You can kind of get away with that because as a kid, you don't notice. I don't so. think it's Nintendo that's stepping in, though. No. I think this is where I disagree with okay, what you're saying. Fair enough. I, I think they had to hold back because it was. This has to be at least PG 13 or lower because sure. it has to. The kids have to go see it. But I think the reason why Nintendo's got so protective after this is because they didn't have a say, really. Uh, okay, it, might, it might be just the studio stepping yeah. in and you know, saying these things. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give Nintendo an out. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I don't think Nintendo had much power once it started shooting, is, is my my thinking here. I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like if they had power once it was shooting, it would be even more different than what it is. I don't yeah, think, I, we, we, this wouldn't exist, is what you're saying. Yeah, the, the, the cancelled production, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, but here, this is what we've got. So, so eventually, a, a breach was opened, and Daisy... We don't have Peach, we have Daisy, uh, is is basically given to an orphanage, and you know, uh, to, to the nuns. Baby's left on the doorstep with a note saying, hey, look after this baby. Uh, and she's got a little piece of the meteorite uh, around her neck, that's her necklace. And she grows up to be an archaeologist, and she's, you know, digging up dinosaurs and looking at them, because she's obsessed with that stuff. Um, and she feels at home in the sewer, one of my favourite lines in the movie. Uh, I just feel at home down here. It's my favourite. Yeah. And then, uh, so basically, Cooper's sent his two goons, what are their names here? Uh, Iggy and Spike. He sent Iggy and Spike over, that's kind of comic relief, but they're bad guys, and they're to kidnap. There's, there's like news reports of like missing you know women in Brooklyn. Right? There's like five or six have went missing, because they're basically they've been kidnapping the wrong person over and over again until they find the right uh, one. The, the, the height of morons. 
They are morons, yes. Uh, there's even a scene of one of them walking into a, the you know the, the, the two workers like carrying a sheet of glass across the, the street. One of them walks into that classic slapstick. Yeah. Uh, so we have that. But they're trying to kidnap her. Uh, meanwhile, Luigi runs into her. Luigi falls for her. He's madly in love from the second he sees her. Uh, there's some really creepy scenes of like Luigi can't speak. He's like so he's tongue tied and he can't speak to her. So Mario's just kind of over his shoulder, creepily looking at her, going, "You want us to ask you to dinner?" Yes, I want to ask you to dinner. And he's, he's kind of feeding them his lines. It's it's creepy because he's so much older. He's so much older, but it's also just the way he's staring at her. He's got this really creepy old man perv kind of look about him. Uh, he does. And I, I, I mean, obviously, I dig Bob Hoskins, but not, damn. I mean, obviously, not this in this is, movie. This is not anyone's finest work. Uh, well, Dennis Hopper's pretty good in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Hopper excels in this kind of shit. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I, I don't know if I can argue with it, is the problem. I don't know. I, I want to, but. Ba bomb. About the bomb scene, or do you remember when he's ordering pizzas? Like, uh, tail mammal lizard, hold, hold the there was something else, and spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't sound too bad overall. There was one thing on it that was like, yeah, okay, let's let's skip that. But overall, it sounded like a, a meaty pizza. Yeah, yeah, and I like a meaty pizza myself. But uh, yeah, so so but they eventually kidnap her. Uh, Mario and Luigi come running through the portal to get her and then they're stranded on this world you, you say running jumping you say jump it's more of a luigi jumps mario kind of stumbles over the edge of this little ravine <laughs> and, and spins in. yeah he spins completely even though the, the trajectory of where he was and how he was falling does not make any sense to how he falls into this uh what is interesting is when they first fall through the portal, they go through like this nightmare fungus world, and they're sort of falling through it, you know, as if they're going through a hell dimension before they come out the the, the wall on the other side. Whenever they're going back later on, they just kind of step through it as if they're just going to step it onto a ledge, which is weird because that's not what happened at all when they they came through it the first time. But whatever, I'm not going to inconsistencies. Inconsistencies. That's the least of the movie's problems. Let's not get to that. Uh, so, yeah. Before we even get to the other world, there's, there's a few things I want to point out. So, so her dig site, she's digging at this, this site, the evil Scapelli, this, this businessman who's also got, works with the mob, uh, also owns a rival plumbing business because they beat the Mario Brothers but, out because of... Because they're the, the Scapellis, of course. The Scapellis. Uh, they sabotage her dig site so the water will start flooding, and then Luigi's like, well, good thing, I know who just to call. It's like, and he gets his brother Mario. He's like, Mario, they're flooding the, 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 the tunnel. They need to come help. He's like, the Scapelli's, and he grabs his tool belt, and he's like, right, let me in. And, you know, so we have them being heroes because they're plumbers, and they can fix this this thing. Even though, yeah. by the time it takes him to come back to the house to get Mario, and then by the time it takes them to get all the way back to the tunnels, it, it should be flooded. It completely flooded. Yeah, yeah, it should be flooded by now. Instead, it's like ankle high. You were critiquing, because we watched this together, you were critiquing during this scene, shouldn't Luigi know how to do this himself? And I said, maybe he's apprenticing. And to be fair, later on in the movie, he doesn't actually say that, that he's apprenticing. He's not, he's not good do. enough yet. I feel like they should have told me that before this. Because <laughs> Daisy's like, hey, you're a plumber. <laughs> Fix it. And, 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 he, and he's like, yeah, I am. Hey, Mario. <laughs> do you want to come give, give us a hand here? <laughs> I, I just told her I'm a plumber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is funny, isn't it? <laughs> So, but anyway, so, so, so they end up, they end up on on the other side, on and and Cooper's kingdom, Cooper's city, uh, the mushroom kingdom. There's there's some mushrooms and the fungus, because uh, the fungus, of course, is Daisy's father who was de-evolved into. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, they tell us that they they've all come from dinosaurs, but yeah, this one's a fungus. Yes, uh, so some some of them come from fungus. Uh, so he's de evolved and he's fungus all over the city. So he actually helps them because later on Luigi realizes the fungus is helping them by like catching them when they fall and giving them little bit bombs when they need a bomb <laughs> and so on. Yeah. So he's, he's he's a fungus. And actually, I actually completely forgot that when we see him for one scene at the end when he becomes a human being again, I forgot it was Lance Henriksen who was playing him. I'm like, oh man, Lance, you've been in some serious shit. I I was not aware that he was in this. So when I saw him, I was like. What the hell is he doing here? Uh, it's like a, it's like a, it's a comfort blanket though. When you see him, you're like, "Oh, Lance Henriksen. I like Lance Henriksen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... The, they clearly went, uh, "Who can we afford for a day?" Yeah, he'll do. 
Yeah. Well, he, he's traditionally done a lot of like low budget direct to video stuff, like between all of his more notable right, things. Right, exactly. But, but you imagine he's still there. He goes, all right. Well, I can charge a bit more than your average Joe. He's still like he he he, he brings a a level of hey, look, we've got someone here. Yes, and it's worth mentioning before he becomes human again. The the the, the epicenter of the fungus is kind of like a giant fungus testicle that comes out of a fungus asshole. That's kind of what it looks like. It it is, yeah. Yeah. Nothing pretty about it. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the thing. So, basically, the, the, the Goombas from the game, which don't look anything like they do in the, you know, the movie. Yeah, it's, you know, effects that did not hold up well were the Goombas. Yeah, they're, they're, they're these really big tall guys with these little heads, these little lizard heads. And yeah. uh, we see Toad, who gets turned into a Goomba, they de evolve him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've just re-comprehended the stupidity as you say it. <laughs> the Toad sure. evolved into a Goomba. All right. Yeah. yeah. Of, of all the people who should have been devolved into some fungus. Yes. And for the record, I'm saying de-evolve because that's what they said in the movie every time they said it, not they, they devolve. I, I, I'm, I'm being more generous. <laughs> <laughs> I am using the terminology that was used in the film. Uh, before anyone starts correcting me, I, I'm well aware of what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's why I'm not picking up on you here. Because uh, you, you know, you know, I will give you shit for saying the wrong word. And Toad's got his little harmonica, even when he's a goomba. Of course he does. Because of course, because Toad's not a goomba, and the, 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 he's, he's a mushroom. Oh, he's, he's a little mushroom man. Yeah. 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 Which I guess is the justification for why the king's a fungus, like he's a mushroom person. Yeah, but why doesn't Toad go back to being a fungus? Because he's not in this. He's he's, he's bullshit. He's, he's dinosaur evolved. Which, by the way, this movie does not understand evolution because it thinks that people evolve from monkeys and they have like uh, de-evolve guns. And they, when when Koopa comes over for a second, he shoots Scapelli with this gun and he turns into a monkey. Which, of course, is I mean, I mean, for, obviously, forgetting the fact that the idea that a gun can de-evolve someone, but like. It's wildly inaccurate. It's well, and, you know, you know what? Line, I, I, I resent you bringing this up because I distinctly remember complaining about this as it happened, and you were, and you said, "Really, this is your complaint? Out of all the things it's doing wrong, you're picking up on this." But you, because you said it like fifteen goddamn times, I get sick of hearing it, so I told you to shut up. Well, it you're, really like, annoyed. It's worth mentioning. It's not worth mentioning fifteen times. It was at the time because it was really irritating. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so so of course the, the the princess is kidnapped and the the mario brothers have to go save her i mean they got that basic I mean, thing right it's, 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 she's not really in a castle but it's, it's, well, I'll no it's it. more like it's more like an evil version of the world trade center because yeah. at one point because because the whole, the whole plan is that if they merge the meteorite back together it'll it'll merge the two worlds and then koopa can take over the actual like full earth and when it starts to kind of happen, when it, you know the meteorite piece is getting put back in, uh, the World Trade Center is replaced with Cooper's Towers, yeah. and it, it's kind of damaged looking. That was actually kind of an awkward moment in in retrospect. Now, yeah, yeah, but, it's one of those that you you don't blame them for, obviously. Obviously, yeah, yeah, it's another just, fault. It they just didn't plays know. differently now. Um, but yeah, so it's the same with uh, Escape from New York at the start of that. I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, yeah. When he when he gets into the, the city by landing a plane on the World Trade Center, you're like, oh, oh this is this is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's one of those where it's it's just it's uncomfortable, but you can't hold it against anyone involved. No, because of course you can. No. It's like, well, yeah, it was fine at the time. Nothing wrong with this when they did it. So, so that's the plan, and the Mario Brothers get arrested because basically Cooper thinks the plumbers have got the rock. That's what she's that's what he's heard. So they put like a basically an APB. Plumbers are to be arrested. <laughs> yeah, like, like they're, they're, they they seem to be familiar with plumbers already, though. Like, oh, be, be aware of plumbers. Gee, like, this is a thing that's happened before. You know, is it just me? I was a just was 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 Cooper was was you know, in this movie was he reminding you a lot of Trump? I was get, there was just the slick back hair, just yeah, the, the way yeah. he carried himself. Uh, there was just like it was like the, the lizard version of Trump. I don't know. There was just something to it. Hey, if you ask someone, you know, they'll tell you he's a lizard man already. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so so they get to the police station, the, the, the processed. We, of course, get the scene of, like, so, what's your name? Mario. What's your name? Luigi. Luigi Mario? 
Mario, Mario. How many Marios between you? It's three. He's Mario, Mario, and I'm Luigi, Mario. We get that scene. Which, to be yeah. fair, that's their names from the games, but it's just... It just it just plays awkwardly, doesn't it? Mm. So, so yeah. So, 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 so they have a car chase, but they escape. They get to get out. And, of course, that's uh, your Mario Kart portion of the film. Yeah, it's pretty shit Mario Kart, though. Uh, the cars all have these extra like electrical things on them for some reason. Yeah. Um, there's see, this is the thing. They could have made this feel like Mario Kart if they like maybe like there was something inside the the car they could throw out, and it'd be like they're throwing out a power up. Yeah, it doesn't have to be something stupid. Like, it didn't have to oh, be yeah, a banana yeah, yeah. skin. Of course, of course, not. I'd have criticised if they'd actually went with that. But like, let's say I don't know. There was like a maybe, maybe this police car had like a like the, the, the row of spikes for for when they're like doing like a roadblock yeah, in the back yeah. seat, and you know Luigi grabbed it and threw it out the window, and it would. You, you appreciate the spirit of it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, the spirit of it. Uh, at one point, they drive on top of another car, though, and that's like a weird thing. I, I assume that I've not I've not played a much much Mario Kart. I don't think that's something from the game. Um, occasionally, they can get flattened, and you can drive over them. Yeah, that's questionable. But... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I and they end up in the desert. Uh, meanwhile, the two idiot characters are putting the, uh, the 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 devolution thing, but they've also got an evolution setting. <laughs> so Obviously. they actually evolve them so they're smarter and now they're very uh, well spoken and they end up making a deal with the Mario Brothers to yes. uh, trade you get us a meter right and we'll get you the girl back and then we can you know win win they, um, they become very philosophical don't they they do uh, I have to laugh though because eventually when they realise that Koopa and that are evil because now they're smart enough to realise that they, they basically try and help Daisy and like hey we're on your side now princess we've always been loyal yeah you were loyal when you kidnapped her from another world and took her over here Yeah. why is she even trying to trust you at this point I don't know um, so where was I okay so so their whole plan is to try and get the rock back which was stolen they were basically mugged by uh Big Bertha, who is the spiky red leather lady, uh, who Mario tries to seduce on the dance floor. uh, And for some reason, Luigi's wearing a red suit and Mario's wearing a yellow suit. And I feel like, surely this should be in just like blue and green here, or red and green. Yeah, red red and green. Yeah. I'm like, why are they not? I don't understand. Of all, all the things to change. Yeah. And obviously, well, once they get that. their proper suits, they're in the right colours, but it's like, surely, surely if you're going to give them full-coloured, like, you know, fancy, like, 80s-looking suits for a dance scene, at least make them both different colours, but no, you, you gave Luigi and Mario's colour. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, it's strange. What's happening with that? I, uh, I think it's it's because, you know, Big Bertha's in, in bright red, right? So Mario uh-huh. can't be in red as well. They could bond over them. Or We'll put Bertha in a different colour then. That's not, any, that's not a big problem to fix. <laughs> I know. Uh, look, what I'm saying is, they had a spike suit laying around, and that was already red. So they went, well, forget it. We're not we're not buying a different spike suit. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it went. <laughs> but she basically, earned, she, they earn her respect, and she helps them, and she gives them her... Their, uh, their, their, their like jet boots thing. Well, you know, that's where the platforming comes in because they have these boots now where they can jump up really high. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, platforming is being generous. <laughs> it's the closest there is in the movie to it. All right, what do you want from me? Uh, uh, all right, all right. And they, they they platform out. They they land in a garbage truck. They get to the the, the bottom of Cooper's tower and they they find their their overalls in a in a locker somewhere. They're like, hey, here we go. We can use these. And that's when they're finally in the iconic suits. And then they're in an elevator and they they make the Goombas dance with each other. Yeah. To music. They get them all sort of rocking and then the Goombas all start pairing off and dancing. Goombas are m- musical creatures. Uh, yeah, I, mean, honestly, I don't think they are. Usually you just squish the little bastards. Yeah, there's no jumping on Goombas. That really should have been a thing. They should have well, somehow... Because bloody freak, like... <laughs> three times the size of uh, the ship. They got rocket boots to jump higher, so. Well, I mean, I mean, this is true. I really resent making the Goombas so tall. Like, like, I, I mean, no. Here's the thing. I would have allowed it because you can stack Goombas, right? In some games, they stack. Okay. And obviously, they have the big trench coat. Obviously, it's just so that they can have a little head sticking out above the coat. Yeah. And which is why they're so tall. But if just once they opened it and there was a stack of Goomba heads. <laughs> I'd have forgiven them. 
That, that, that could have been something. That could have been something. I mean, meanwhile, Daisy's bonded with Yoshi and... Yeah. She runs around. Mario goes to save his girlfriend who was kidnapped as well, who's with all these other missing girls. And we get our one uh, pipe scene of the film where Mario and the girls raid a mattress down a giant icy pipe. Yep. With yeah, Goombas I mean, chasing after them on their own mattress. That's that's a mo- that's a that's a scene in the movie. They, look, they go down a pipe. I, I, I can't dispute that. <laughs> they really should have been a you know a do 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 noise. Yeah, yeah. Is, is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They really should have been. That was a missed opportunity. Uh, but hey, I don't, I don't know. I, I there's so many st- stupid little moments. I, I think the the bigger broader problem though. I mean, other than you know, obviously get to the final action scene. You've got that bomb that you know travels for an obscene amount of time before it blows up. God, how long is the fuse on that thing? Yeah. Uh. So so you've got that. You, you and whatever else. But honestly, I I think the biggest thing about this movie is this is you know a, a video game movie that's supposed to appeal to kids. It's a cartoon world about a mushroom kingdom with a plumber who jumps in cute little monsters' heads and then gets to the the sort of dinosaur, crocodile, turtley looking thing at the end, you know, and beats them. Yeah. Right. That's the that's the that's the that's the, that's the game. That, that, that's Mario in a nutshell. Right. And the directors of this went, no, we want dystopia, kind of Blade Runnery, but with dinosaur elements, with a lot of fetish imagery like the thought process to get to the the core idea of this movie baffles me do you think they ever played a mario game didn't they even played a level like the first level of of any mario game they probably did i'm not sure they did i think they played the first level i i think they they played the first I mean, le- typically even the first level is you know help me i've been kidnapped and then castle yeah, I don't. Nah, I, I, I think they played. I just don't think they cared. Yeah, that's true. They, I, I feel like the people who took this job. What, what, what's the names here? Uh, uh, Annabelle Jankel and Rocky Morton, uh, or even the writers Parker Bennett and Terry Runte. Like, I feel like they want. They had an idea for a movie they wanted to make. They were hired for Super Mario Brothers, and they wrote their movie and just forced in all the names and things from Super Mario Brothers and made it fit. That's that, that's what I feel like kind of happened here, uh, and no one was kind of paying attention to stop them from doing that. <laughs> somehow, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wonder. Mean, I, I wonder if the executives had never played a Mario game before, so they, 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 they didn't necessarily know. They from, didn't know better. Yeah, they, they, they didn't know that this was wrong. <laughs> And it's funny. It's like that sounds like surely like movie execs would you know check their investments. They're paying for all this movie to be made. They want money to be made. Surely they would check. I believe it. I believe they just didn't know. No, I, I do as well. That's kind of sad, but I, I, I do believe that. I do believe it. Uh, it's, 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 it's all the... obviously the movie sequel base at the end as well. Uh, Daisy comes storming through with a shotgun and like you know she's got like war torn post apocalyptic gear on and she's like Mario Luigi, I need your help. It's like. Ah, oh, let's go, let's go, brother. They grab their tools, and then it's like, roll credits, rock music plays, and it's like, yeah. yeah. In fact, here's a, here's a little bit of trivia. I, I I remember. Apparently, there was a contest in Nintendo Power, uh, where the, the 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 prize was to be an extra in Super Mario Brothers Two, which never got made. <laughs> no, I wonder why. <laughs> But that was a prize and uh, an issue of Nintendo Power. I wonder what that poor sod who won that got instead, if anything. Probably nothing. It'll be one of those no cash value, not redeemable for anything else. One of them bollocks clauses. I don't know if that applies to that, though. We just we just couldn't give you the prize you were promised. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they don't, unless it says they have to give you another prize, then yeah, true. tough shit. That was so. Imagine, imagine the, how how I mean. Most people will win one thing in their life if they're lucky. Imagine winning that and then being like, "No, I don't get anything." No, it's true. That would that would that would suck dearly. That would really. Suck. And maybe they just gave him a Mario game. Ah, uh, here's a Super Nintendo with. Yeah. Super Mario World on it. There, have that. Probably. 
I mean, depending on what the, the extra roll was, that may be cheaper than just buying an extra, or like hiring an extra for the day. So, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you gotta imagine that they had them lying around. I mean, production was huge at the time. Yeah, yeah. That makes, makes some sense. Of course, the guy who won the competition, or girl, uh, being probably a fan, had probably had a Super Mario or Super Nintendo and yeah. Super Mario World because you know, that was the thing that everyone had. Maybe, you... maybe they signed it, got some, yeah. Uh... So get some developers to sign I mean, or something. I didn't, of course. I had a Sega, but you know. Of course you did. What do you want? For? I don't even know anyone who had a Nintendo when I was a kid. No, that's fair enough. Everyone had Sega. I, I, I didn't have anything when I was that young, I, but I, I went to my cousins and played their Nintendo a lot. Now it was Sega, and then it went to PS One. My my first console was a, a Game Boy. the The Game Boy, the Pocket, the the see through one where you could see all the parts inside. It, it wasn't the color. Still the one before the colour, but it was the see-through casing pocket. And then I got a PS1. I feel like getting a Game Boy first would would have put me off playing games. It would have been too simple. I don't know. I was getting, uh, My first games were uh, whatever the Mario game on it at the time was. I can't remember now. And uh, and uh, Pokemon. The, you know, the original one. I want to say Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. That, that... That, that, that could be right. Yeah. I, I mean, I had fun. I had a great game, and and Pokemon still holds up. It, it was, you know, some advanced mechanics for its time. Oh, advanced mechanics. I'm just, I'm just being visuals, like nothing to stimulate you really. Oh, had some decent designs. Actually, was Pokemon even on the original Game Boy, or is that just Game Boy Color? I, I no, no, have... it was on the original. Okay. The, yeah, yeah. The the red and blue was on the original. There was color versions of them. I feel like I remember playing them in the color. Oh no, that was the remakes. They did the the remakes on the Game Boy Advance for the for the original. No 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 no. no. I remember in school at that age, people playing them in Game Boy Color. Gold and silver were definitely color. I mean, I never played them, so I don't want to argue this point too much. But my memory is definitely telling me those were Game Boy Color. In fact, you know what? I'm going to just look it up. (laughs) Why the hell not? No, no, it just says Game Boy. Okay. I'll yeah. Because uh, the, there's the remakes later on, the, the Game Boy Advance full colour. Gold and silver, I'm pretty sure, were on the colour. Oh, okay, okay. I felt the colour was a thing already by the time these oh, came out. Oh, no, no. I, I remember the green tint. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, never mind. Do you know funny? Actually, just to swing this back around to Mario, I when, this, when I saw this movie as a kid, I never played Mario. Really? Yeah, I never had a Nintendo. I, I, I didn't play a single Mario game until Sunshine and the GameCube. Because I bought a GameCube. Well, I got a GameCube for Christmas. I didn't buy it. <laughs> I was only a kid. But yeah. when I got a GameCube, I, I wanted that for Resident Evil. Because the remake was on that. And of I was course, like, of course Resident, you did. Yes, Resident Evil. That's why, that's why I'm getting a GameCube over a PS2 at the time. I got a PS2 eventually, but I went to the GameCube first. And it's okay, so okay I'll, get a Mar- I'll get the Mario game because that's the big thing in Nintendo. And yeah, Sunshine's yeah. okay. It's easily the one that I've played the most of since. Because I've I've never really owned any other Mario games. I've yeah. I've I've played a couple of levels of like one and three, maybe the first one a world at some point. I've never yeah. really played a Mario game that much like, all the way through or to any great extent. That's a shame you're missing out. Eh, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, I think honestly, you know, I just say you know, Game Boy was my first console. I think it's why I'm somewhat predisposed to enjoying handhelds. That that was uh, as much as I got a PS One, you know, an Xbox, you know, and so on. When I was younger, my primary and, focus was the the Game Boy line. And similarly, I never played a handheld until the 3DS. No, no, I I, I had the, the Game Boy Pocket. I had the color. I had the Advance. I had the the you know the the next one of the Advance, the one that flips open. SP. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I never I never did the Micro because screw that one. That was just another version of the same thing. I, I remember the SP being amazing because it had a backlight and it was the first time I had a backlight and I didn't need to buy one of the little overhanging lights to stick on, you know, when you're playing outside in the car or something. Hmm. I never bought all this nonsense. No, no I, I was all consoles and I've never really... Uh, and to this day, I, that's why I never really care about Nintendo's first party games. I don't have any attachment to any of them, mm-hmm. which is why as well as the Switch might be doing and as, as, as good as it might be for what it is, I have no... I have no Desire to play the new Mario. I've no desire to play the new Zelda. I just missing out. Best games of the generation so far. You you say that, but I've always gotten bored of Mario. Whenever I've tried to play Mario games, I get bored really quickly. I mean, Odyssey is not too different to Sunshine, so 
Yeah, I never finished that either, and I had that for years. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, fair enough. I, I played that when I got it, when I was like trying to like calm down after being really tense in Resident Evil, because you know, that was really tense at the time. Uh, oh, yeah, you, you'd never feel that now. But I never, yeah, I never finished it. I never felt the desire to keep going. Like, I, I had a point where I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm done. I, don't, I just, it just, it, I don't know, it just doesn't appeal to me all that much. It's baffling. Ma- Ma- Mario is a, a staple for me. Never played a Zelda game. Just, just some factoids for people to be shocked at. I've never touched one, ever. Yeah. And, 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 and it's whether well, you, know, you are someone who considers yourself, you know, a proper gamer. Like, you, you play a lot. Well, yeah, no, I, would, I would never say the phrase I'm a gamer, but yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, you you game a lot. I was just, oh yeah, but that that phrase sounds really douchebaggy. I'm a proper gamer. All right, fine. <laughs> As opposed to what? <laughs> Some prick who plays mobile games all the time. Yeah, yes, I play games, yes, but uh, don't give a shit about Nintendo. Never mm-hmm. have. <laughs> and here, here we are. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll go back to playing my my XCOM. Thank you very much. And uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, which very good, but you know, don't not marry on rabbits. And my and my Naughty Dog games. <laughs> Shut up! Don't you tell me that Mario Plus Rabbids is better than XCOM? You filthy ginger. I'm not. I'm, it's not better than XCOM Two. I'm still not accepting that. <laughs> Enemy with an unknown still better than your Mario plus rabbits. I don't, I don't know about that. Nah, nah. It's too too cutesy. I, I want to punch the screen after about ten minutes because everything's just making all these stupid little noises. They are, but it's a very good game. <laughs> I I just I don't know. Uh, we've we'll tied you there to just talk about we, the games here, which I, I guess was always a, a risk with a, a video uh, game movie. Uh, it was. At least we kept it, you know, Nintendo focused for the it, most part. It was the same with um, when me and Tim did the commentary for the first Resident Evil movie. Like a lot of that commentary became okay. Let's talk about the Resident Evil games because that's what we both like, <laughs> and we just kept talking yeah. about those. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the, like I feel like there's been so much stuff in Super Mario Bros. as a movie that I don't know what new stuff I can really add all that much beyond my bizarre observations of various things and my slight defence at the start of, it's not that bad. It's <laughs> Yeah, which you then explain later by going, yeah, I don't give a shit about Mario. <laughs> well, I don't give a shit about Mario. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, that might help. It probably does, yeah. But whereas you know, most people uh, who are interested have nostalgia for Mario, you have nostalgia for the Super Mario Bros. movie. I do. I actually have more attachment to this movie than I do. No, the games. Ex- exactly. Which is true. why I think you defend this more than most people would. <laughs> and I'm not saying you really defend. I'm not saying you bat for this movie, but you still defend it more than anyone I've ever heard. Which, yeah, something hey, to be said for that. This this got a Blu-ray release because a cult label wanted to put it out because it's... there's a fan base that actually really like this movie. <laughs> what? They exist. Do they like this movie, or do they just want to view it in the best format for when they put it on in a bad movie night? Well, that's that's, I mean, that's possible. You can still be a fan of a bad movie, though. You can, you can, but you you don't actually like the movie. Uh, that's semantics. <laughs> all, right, all right, fine. Because I would say I love The Room. Okay, fine. Doesn't mean I like The Room, but I love okay. The Room. Okay, but surely no one thinks this is a good movie. I don't know. There's, there's weirdos out there who like everything. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. I mean, think, they, think, those people oh, would be wrong. Think of all the people we argue about with Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. Ugh, don't remind me. This is better than Batman v Superman. I'll say that right now. Sure, yeah. It's more faithful. I don't know if I quite agree to that one. I mean, Japan of his man, for all its faults, <laughs> visually it's mostly accurate. Mario! Why did you say that name? Mario! <laughs> oh, the crossover, the crossover I never knew I wanted. <laughs> oh, I saw, I saw a good thing. Uh, the retitled Batman v Superman to call me by your mother's name. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> that's pretty good. It was. It pretty was. good. Um, oh dear. Uh, so, uh, Dennis Hopper's a gem. It's worth watching for him. Uh, 
It's it's not. <laughs> it's no, but, it's worth watching clips of him on YouTube. No, no, here's the thing. I actually do genuinely think that everyone should see this once. It, sure. It is a fascinating example of how not to adapt something. It and, is. Uh, and, but and, I would say if you're going to watch it, don't do it alone. Or do it with friends, sure, absolutely. Or, do it, or do it drunk. Or do it drunk. Or both. Be but meta. I do seriously think, just as as, as as a fascinating, you know, like, case in history, how not to adapt something, how did these things come to be? It is a weird oddity of, like, mainstream cinema of how did this happen. I think this is a fascinating movie. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are documentaries about this movie, The Making of It. Oh, sure, yeah. I think they will be fascinating to watch i think i'm way more interested in those than i am oh absolutely movie. yeah but yeah yeah. i think you always have to see the movie itself for context of yeah, those things. yeah so i do think if you've not seen it or if you've not seen it since you were a kid even i feel like it's probably worth giving it a watch and just going down the the the, the you know that scene in Willy wonka when they're going to the the, the little boat you know yeah. scene right it's basically that <laughs> you feel like you're on that boat right <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> go do that. So so go watch it. Feel like that. Uh, ha- have some booze and chocolate to feel better about it. <laughs> but that's that's it. Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I'm trying to think what my favorite Nintendo game is. I th- I've never finished one. I don't think because I've not really ever had. Nint- I mean, outside of uh, I mean, the Resident Evils in the GameCube don't count as finishing Nintendo games. I don't think. No, you're you're talking first party. Uh, well, I'm off the first part because I, I think if, you, if I think of the classic Nintendo, the thing that I appreciate the most that I've never really gotten into enough as much as I should is probably the Castlevania games. But that's not okay. first party. But you know, I, yeah, I associate no, it with no, Nintendo. No, I get you. I get you. Uh, um, first party, probably the Metroid stuff. But even then, like I'm not. Mm. Mm, I, I respect those games a bit more. I think. Uh, but hey, I'd play Mario. I like kart racers. Yeah. If, I, if I happened to have a system that had Mario Kart on it, I'd, I'd play the Mario I, Kart. I, I will bat for Mario Kart 8 on the Switch all day. Uh, uh, you know, it's such a blast to just... You know, you know the, the great thing about the Switch is like, here, just you know, don't need to buy a second controller to play it with someone. You'd be, you'd be at work, you go, all right, well, uh, we're, on, we're on a break. Let's play Mario Kart for 20 minutes. It's mm. great. I... Uh... Yeah, honestly, the only thing that's remotely looking good on the Switch for me is Octopath Traveler, which is not enough of a reason to get a Switch. It's so, not enough. So, I it so I, I, I am, I am good. Uh, but <laughs> so, yeah, that's that a bit of insight. Uh, I did have a Wii briefly. I never really played any. Every, everyone had a Wii briefly. Yeah. Uh, outside of Wii Sports, though, I never played any Nintendo games on it. So. <laughs> no, I don't think I. I played. Um... I don't know where I looked this up the other day, but I can't remember the name of it. It's a like a, a Japanese Red Steel. Game. Red Steel, yeah, it was all right. I uh, no on, on the Wii, uh, it was sports at first, and then it was like, hey, Resident Evil Four is pretty good on this system. I'll play that for a bit, and then I was like, I'm only using this to play Resident Evil Four, which I have on other systems. Selling it, bye bye yeah, Wii. The, 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 the Wii is one of those systems that everyone got. And then it ended up in a closet within like six, six, eight months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, I never touched a Wii U. They even oh come, God, no! They even come close to touching a Wii U. E- even I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. So I've had an N64 either, obviously, since I said the GameCube was my first. So yeah, it's, it's just how it is. Hey, there's rumors of a spiral trilogy happening, like like the Crash games did, by the way. Just... There is. Which the, the Crash trilogy is obviously you know because it was. It was on PS4, but yeah. it's coming everywhere else. It's going to the Switch as well, which excites yeah. me. Honestly, I already have it on the PS4, but I'm going to buy it on the Switch because what, what am I like? I have it on the PS4, but there is a temptation to get it on PC when it's on sale. I think. No, oh, I get that. Like uh, that, that used to be my reasoning, but the Switch has overtaken me as as my primary con- for that sort of stuff because I'll be like, well, I can just play in bed. I can play on the bus. I can play at work. I don't have to be anywhere specific to play. So if I can get it on that, I will. Um, nah, I'm good. Uh, probably get a PC though. That way, I can stream it at some point, and people can see me rage at the anger or, inducing. Or does. how bad are you at Crash? I'm not bad at Crash actually. I mean, I, I played a lot of it as a kid. So uh, two and three, I'm pretty. 
decent at, I think. One, of course, is excruciatingly painful and difficult. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, so it's meant to be excruciatingly painful and difficult. So, uh, yeah, if, I, I play that and I go, how the hell did I do this as a kid? Cause I, think, I think on the PS4 version, I beat two. I'm actually the last boss of three, and I just... That's just when I sort of got tired of it, because I was sort of jumping between the games, because you can jump between the three of them. And I got to the final boss in three, so I can just kind of go and finish that whenever I'm in the mood to fight a boss. Uh, I finished two, and one, I think I'm like... I got past the first bridge level for sure. It's a bitch in itself. Yeah. I don't know if I quite got to the... I think I got to the boss between the two bridge levels. You didn't get to the icy bridge level then? Not the icy one, no. Uh, no. But, yeah, so... Hey, that turned into a bit of a tangent about video games. Uh, of course, if you want to talk to me about video games, you can come watch me stream on Twitch. Uh, to use a place as any to promote. Uh, it, it is, isn't it? The the Mail Fuzz TV Twitch channel, which is usually me streaming. Although that's to say, Connor might not pop in for a dual stream at some point. Uh, uh, right, maybe maybe sometime soon. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So that is that. I guess that's Super Mario Bros. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> oh, I, I guess we have to put a rating on it. Oh yeah, that's right. The movie. What would you rate Super Mario Bros. out of 10? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be generous and give it a 3.5. Ah, so, so, I the, the, the 0.5 is the generous part. No, I'm giving it a 4. I, I think it's not a good movie by any means. It's a terrible adaptation. But it's just kind of weird enough and bizarre enough that there's enough sort of silly entertainment value to be like, okay, what are they doing now? What's happening? There's enough of that that I think it gets a 4. And plus, Dennis Hopper's hamming it up, which is kind of cool, and... The you know like I mean I like Bob Hoskins and stuff I mean that's not the best roles but there's a lot of likable actors doing the lines. <laughs> there, there is that that is undeniable. They um, they paid money. Hey, Alan Silvestri's score is not bad. Uh, it's not the worst, yeah. So I've, that f- I've, I've, I've honestly heard worse work from him. Yeah, obviously it's no Back to the Future, which is his crown jewel, of course. Uh, Alan Silvestri, uh, but it's, it's got that fun little like plumber theme that they've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. It's not bad. Uh, which I think's on a saxophone or something, maybe. If I'm remembering correctly. Sounds about right. But uh, yeah, okay, that's Super Mario Bros. <laughs> I feel like I feel like people would expect like an hour long like, breakdown of everything in this movie stupid, but ultimately, like it's a lot of broad strokes with a lot of little goofy things in between. Yeah. And it's it's, it's kind of like, honestly the, the fascination of. How the just the entire concept of it came to be is the the interesting part. But hey, uh, so that has been Super Mario Brothers. So of course, uh, tell us what you think of the movie in the comments, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, over at patreon.com slash tv. There'll be a link to that in the description. Of course, we mentioned this was the winner of the Patreon vote. The next Patreon vote is up as well uh, right now for the, our patrons to go and vote in at the $5 tier. Uh, it is a combination of heist movies and disaster movies because Hurricane Heist is a thing and we thought that'd be funny to mix the two together. Uh, so we got uh, in the heist half of it we've got the original Italian job and the original uh, Lady Killers I want to see the news yeah that sounds about yeah. right and then in the disaster half we've got the Torian Inferno and Volcano so that's what's up in the vote <laughs> right. well one of them's a classic I mean Volcano Volcano feels like a classic because I watched it as a kid at the theatre I remember going to see that I, f- I feel like it's a classic in its own right <laughs> Uh, Tommy Lee Jones he's great anyway uh, so that is that is that so uh, yeah that's us so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it this has been a shambles we'll see you next time and keep watching movies guys goodbye <laughs>